Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome to a new episode of the end of days. We're talking about the ahadith which speak of trials and tribulations and the minor and the major signs that will happen before the coming of the hour. And what we're going to talk about today, insha'Allah ta'ala, is to talk about Ibn Sayyad. And Ibn Sayyad, Al Imam Muslim in Kitab al Fitan, mentions a great deal about him. And his story is linked with the story of the Dajjal. To give you a little bit of background, Ibn Sayyad was a person who lived during the time of the Prophet, وسلم, and the scholars disagreed as to whether Ibn Sayyad was indeed the Dajjal or not. The Prophet وسلم, prior to that had told the companions that there would be a number of minor Dajjal, a number of liars that would come and claim prophethood. And that these minor liars would be sort of a precursor to the coming of the Dajjal, the great liar among all of them. And so the scholars disagreed over whether Ibn Sayyad was a minor Dajjal or whether he was himself the Dajjal who simply disappeared and would reappear at the time that Allah Azza wa Jal decreed for him to reappear. So there are a number of ahadith in this and to speed this up we're just going to cover these in English insha'Allah ta'ala. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu an said, we came back after having performed pilgrimage or he said, after having performed Umrah. And Ibn Sa'id, he's called Ibn Sa'id and Ibn Sayyid, was along with us. And we encamped at a place and people dispersed, and I and he were left behind. So Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and Ibn Sayyid were left behind together. I felt terribly frightened of him, as it was said about him that he was the Dajjal. So this shows that the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were in a matter of disagreement as to whether or not Ibn Sayyad was indeed the Dajjal. He brought his goods and placed them by my luggage. And I said, it is intense heat. Would you not place it under that tree? And he did that, i.e. he was trying to move him away from him because of his fear that this person was the Dajjal. Then there appeared before us a flock of sheep. He went and brought a cup of milk and said, Abu Sa'id, Drink this. I said, it is intense heat and the milk is also hot. Whereas the fact was that I did not like to drink from his hands or to take it from his hand. Abu Sa'id made an excuse. Why not to drink the milk when the reality was that he didn't want to drink the milk because of his extreme fear of Ibn Sayyad, that he was the Dajjal. Then he said, oh Abu Sa'id, I Ibn Sayyad said, oh Abu Sa'id, I think that I should take a rope and suspend it by the tree and commit suicide because of what the people are saying about me. He said, Abu Sa'id, the one who is ignorant of the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I, this is to be pardoned, this can be overlooked. But all people of the Ansar, the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not concealed from you. You have the best knowledge of the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam among the people. Did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not say that the Dajjal would be a non-Muslim whereas I am a Muslim? So at this point Ibn Sayyad is trying to convince Abu Sa'id al-Khudri that he is not the Dajjal. Didn't the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that the Dajjal would be a non-Muslim when I am a Muslim? or a non-believer when I am a believer. Did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not say that he would be barren and have no children, whereas I have left my children in Medina? Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not say that he would not go to Medina and Makkah, whereas I have come from Medina and now I intend to go to Makkah? Abu Sa'id Al-Khudri radiallahu an said, I was about to accept his excuse, i.e. he gave a number of excuses, a number of reasons why he could not have been the Dajjal. 
He said he could not have been the Dajjal because he lived in Medina and was going to Mecca. And the Dajjal would not enter Medina nor Mecca. He said that he could not be the Dajjal as the Dajjal would not have any children and he had children. And he said that he could not be the Dajjal because he was a Muslim and the Dajjal would be a Kafir. At this point, Abu Sa'id was about to accept his excuse. Then he said, I know the place where the Dajjal was born and where he is now. So Abu Sa'id said to him, may your whole day be spent. I may your day be ruined. You can see here that Abu Sa'id is confused. He has heard that Ibn Sayyad was the Dajjal. And yet Ibn Sayyad doesn't seem to match the Dajjal exactly. In a further hadith from Abdullah ibn Umar, he reports that, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhum ajma'in went along with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the company of some people to Ibn Sayyad and he found him playing with children near a certain battlement in Medina and Ibn Sayyad was at the threshold of adolescence and he did not perceive the presence of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until he struck his back with his hands. I, the Prophet wasallam, struck him and surprised him. He said to Ibn Sayyad, don't you bear witness that I am the messenger of Allah? Ibn Sayyad looked at him and said, I bear witness that you are the messenger of the unlettered. I, he refused to bear proper witness that the Prophet wasallam, was the messenger of Allah. Then he said to the Prophet wasallam. Do you bear witness that I am the messenger of Allah? I Ibn Sayyad said to him, do you bear witness that I am the messenger of Allah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rejected this and said, I affirm my faith in Allah and his messengers. Then the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, what do you see? Ibn Sayyad said, Dukh. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was concealing in his mind, Dukhan, the chapter or the surah of ad dukhan And Ibn Sayyad could only perceive a part of the title, a part of the word, just dukh. He could not achieve any more than that. So the Prophet wasallam said, may you be disgraced and dishonored. You will not be able to go beyond your rank. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, O oh Allah's messenger, permit me to strike his neck. Allow me to kill him. The Prophet wasallam said, if he is the Dajjal who will appear near the end of time, you will not be able to kill him. And if he is not that, then there is no good for you to kill him. Look at this. The Prophet ﷺ himself was not clear as to whether Ibn Sayyad was the Dajjal or not. He was not clear about this. He was not firm as to whether he was or he wasn't. He simply said to Umar, if he is the Dajjal, then you will not be able to kill him. And if he is not the Dajjal, then there is no good in killing him. Abdullah ibn Umar narrated that after some time, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala an went towards the palm trees where Ibn Sayyad was. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went near to the tree, he saw him, i.e. he saw Ibn Sayyad on a bed with a blanket, around him from which a murmuring sound was being heard and then Ibn Sayyad's mother saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She saw the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She told Ibn Sayyad, here is Muhammad. I.e. she informed him as to that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was near to him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if she had left him alone, he would have made things clear. And Abdullah ibn Umar told him that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up among the people. And he praised Allah as he deserved. Then he made a mention of the Dajjal. And he said, I warn you of him. And there is no prophet who has not warned his people against the Dajjal. Even Nuh warned against him. But I am going to tell you a thing which no prophet told his people. You must know that the Dajjal is one-eyed. And Allah Azza wa Jal is not one-eyed. Ibn Shihab said, Umar ibn Thabit al-Ansari informed me that some of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiallahu anhum informed him that the day when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned the people against the Dajjal, he also said, 
there will be written between his two eyes the word kafir. And everyone who will resent his deeds will be able to read it, or every Muslim will be able to read it. He said, bear this thing in mind that none of you will be able to see Allah exalted and glorious until you die. Inshallah, after the break, we will continue to talk more about Ibn Sayyad and to come to a conclusion with the help of Allah Azza wa Jal as to who Ibn Sayyad was and what his role was in this signs of the coming of the hour and the end of days. And until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back. We're talking about Ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad, as we've heard from these two hadith, which are just two of the many hadith that Imam Muslim mentions in Kitab al Fitan, Mashrat al Sa'a, regarding Ibn Sayyad. And we said that Ibn Sayyad was a person whom it was said about him that he was the Dajjal. And the Prophet وسلم, was not given knowledge as to whether Ibn Sayyad was indeed the Dajjal or not. Rather, he said to Umar ibn al-Khattab, if he is the Dajjal, then you will not be able to kill him. And if he is not the Dajjal, then killing him will do you no good. And Umar, in another hadith, radiallahu ta'ala an, swore by Allah in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Ibn Sayyad was the Dajjal. And the Prophet sallallahu did not prevent him from doing so. So this left a problem or a confusion among the scholars. How could the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allow Umar to swear that Ibn Sayyad was the Dajjal and not contradict him or not speak against him? And yet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not make any statement that he was the Dajjal. And the companions continue to differ over it. It is said during the battles that happened in the time between the Sahaba during the Khilafah of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, and after that, it is said that in one of those battles, what happened is that Ibn Sayyad disappeared. He disappeared and his body was not found. And he was sighted after that in Asfahan in the place where the Dajjal was said to that he will come from Asfahan. So if we look on one side, we see a mountain of evidence that Ibn Sayyad was the Dajjal. And if we look on the other side, we see a mountain of evidence that Ibn Sayyad was not the Dajjal. Some of the scholars joined between this in different ways. Some of them said that Ibn Sayyad was the Dajjal and that he simply disappeared and will come again at the time when Allah Azza wa Jal appoints him to come. Some of the scholars said that Ibn Sayyad was a lesser Dajjal. And the meaning of a lesser Dajjal is the hadith which is mentioned in Kitab al-Fitan in Sahih Muslim. That the Prophet wasallam said, the last hour will not come until there will arise around 30 imposters. 30 of the Dajjal, mini Dajjals, minor Dajjals. And each one of them will claim that he is a messenger of Allah. So some of the scholars said Ibn Sayyad was a minor Dajjal, i.e. a minor sign of the coming of the hour, a minor Dajjal, one of the 30 or so, around 30 in number, that will appear before the great Dajjal comes. Each one of them will claim that they are a messenger of Allah. And even in this last 100 or 200 years, we have seen among the people, those who have claimed in different parts of the world, who have claimed to be a messenger of Allah i.e. a Dajjal from the minor Dajjal. And it's hard to approximate the number, but certainly the number is not a small number. There is a very large number, and you fear that it is very near to the number of 30 that the Prophet ﷺ said would represent the completion of that minor sign. We don't know exactly, have 25 appeared, have 27 appeared, have 29 appeared? We don't know that exactly, but we know that there is a significant number of minor liars, i.e. people who have claimed prophethood, who have appeared. So some of the scholars said that Ibn Sayyad was one of them. And some of them said Ibn Sayyad was a devil, a shaitan, who took the appearance of the Dajjal 
but was not himself the Dajjal. He took the appearance of the Dajjal and used it to scare the companions, but that he himself was not a Dajjal. As for the correct opinion, then the strongest answer is to say that Allah knows best. Because the reality is that if the Prophet wasallam was reluctant to say one way or another regarding Ibn Sayyad, and the companions themselves differed over him, and they saw reasons for him being and reasons for him not being, or potentially reasons for him being a minor Dajjal rather than a major Dajjal, then it's not really for us to go any further than that. We should learn where to stop. We should learn very much where to draw the line. And we should say that with regard to Ibn Sayyad, we don't know. It may be that he was a devil that took the form of the Dajjal. It may be that he was the Dajjal himself and that he will come back again to be the Dajjal at the end of time, i.e. that he simply disappeared to a place where Allah knew him to be. And it is also possible that he was a minor Dajjal, i.e. he was a person who was termed as being Dajjal, but not being the major Dajjal that is spoken of as coming in the time towards the coming of the end of days. As for these 30 liars, these 30 minor Dajjals, as we find in the Ahadith, in the Hadith in Sahih Muslim, then as we said, these have been many and these have been great in number. But I think one of the things that we can benefit the most from this story of Ibn Sayyad is first of all the importance of speaking with knowledge. And this links to what we said about the Dukhan, about the smoke. When the man came to Ibn Mas'ud and said to Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an about the smoke, Ibn Mas'ud rebuked the people who spoke about these issues without knowledge and who rushed to say that this was a major sign or a minor sign. He said, the one who has knowledge, let him speak in accordance with it. And the one who does not have knowledge, let him say Allah knows best. So this is an important methodology. When trials and tribulations come, we don't know. Much of it we don't know exactly what the situation is. If we spoke about a room, does a room refer to this or does it refer to that? Was Ibn Sayyad the major Dajjal or a minor Dajjal or was he a shaitan who took the form of the Dajjal? All of these things are things that we don't know. We have many, many ahadith. And I strongly encourage all of you to take a copy of Sahih Muslim, to open up Kitab, Al-Fitan wa Ashrat al the book of tribulations and portents of the hour or signs of the coming of the hour. Pick up this book and read the different signs. Keep an open mind. Take them as they are. And this is a mistake some people make that they don't take them as they are. They twist it. So every time gold is mentioned, gold becomes something else. Every time the Dajjal is mentioned, it becomes a system. Every time... They continue like this, twisting the words and taking them out of context. Take the words about the Day of Judgment and the End of Days in context as they have been mentioned. And those that you know about, speak about. And those that you don't know about, say Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Because at the end of the day, we don't know the full details. But like the Hadith of Hudayfa that we mentioned, when you see the face of someone You've known that person before and you see their face, so you will recognize it, inshallah ta'ala. And the companions remained fearful of fitan. And I think this is another benefit from the story of Ibn Sayyad. The companions remained fearful. They remained in a state of worry. They remained scared of falling into a trial or into a tribulation. Despite their piety, despite their nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal, Abu Sa'id was scared to lie under the same tree as Ibn Sayyid. Abu Sa'id was scared or reluctant to drink milk from the hands of Ibn Sayyid. And that shows the mentality of the Muslim towards the events that will happen at the end of days. We don't rush to them. We don't want to be a part of them. And we remain cautious. We remain distant from trials and tribulations and from troubles and worries. We try to stay away from them as much as we possibly can. So I think those are some important lessons 
from the other ahadith on this topic that are mentioned in Kitab al Fitan is that Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu an reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met Ibn Sayyid and so did Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma on some of the roads of Medina. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do you bear testimony to the fact that I am the Messenger of Allah? Thereupon he said, Do you bear testimony that I am the Messenger of Allah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I affirm my faith in Allah, his angels, his books. And then he said, what do you see? He said, I see a throne over water. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you see the throne of Iblis upon the water. And what else do you see? He said, I see two truthful people and a liar, or two liars and a truthful person. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, leave him, he has been confounded. So again, this is another example, maybe the same event that happened previously or a similar event, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Ibn Sayyad what he saw. Again, Ibn Sayyad responded with the same thing that, do you bear witness that I am the Messenger of Allah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed his faith in Allah and his messengers, which is the best kind of response that a Muslim can have in a situation where he is presented by a statement of kufr or a statement of someone encouraging you to make kufr is to say the statement, I believe in Allah and his angels, his books and his messengers, as the Prophet sallallahu said. And then he said to him, what do you see? He said, I see a throne upon water. And the Prophet sallallahu made it clear that Ibn Sayyad was becoming confused by the shaitan and that the shaitan was confusing him as to this thing that he said, I see two truthful people and a liar or two liars and a truthful person. And the Prophet ﷺ said, leave him, he has been confounded. So this hadith gives us another part of the picture of Ibn Sayyad. But it doesn't really help to clarify anything further as to who he was, except to perhaps emphasize to us that he was being confused by the shaitan and that he practiced some degree of fortune telling or something similar to that. And this is something that was known from Ibn Sayyad during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and indeed during the time of the companions. So that's all we have time for in this episode. And until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.